Good morning and welcome to the first day of Global AI Data Analytics and Insights Summit. Today, I will talk about how expectations have changed and continue to change with the evolution of analytics in the last two decades. To set the context, let me share a story with you. It's a story about me and my journey, and perhaps it's a story about a lot of us who onboarded the journey of analytics even before it became a buzz. Two decades ago, as a student, I was looking for options to pursue higher studies. I was interested in numbers. However, I wanted to do something different from the usual options at that time, which were focused on financial statements or financial analysis. The other options available to me at that time were to either pursue a course in economics, statistics, or go with the buzz of that time, which was the information technology. But I wanted to do something which was a blend of numbers and computers. After a lot of research, I found such course called business systems. I wasn't sure where it will take me, but I took the leap and I went with it. Now let's fast forward to today. A student in a similar situation like I was, who wants to pursue education in the area of numbers, they'll go on Google, they will type analytics, and even before one can complete the entire phrase, Google will already start showing the options for the courses on analytics. And within a second, you get nearly a trillion search results. And not just for students. In fact, one will find a lot of options on this page for an existing professional on how to shift from their current career to a data analytics career. And that's how much data analytics is sought after today. And we know this. But analytics has been around for a very long time. Let it be banking, let it be insurance or government. But it has become more mainstream over the last decade. The reason it has become more mainstream because the monopoly over the data has been broken. Every company today, regardless of the industry they are in, is a data analytics company. Be it your commute, food delivery, healthcare, retail, entertainment, telecom, social media, and many more. But why is it so? Why did analytics become so mainstream? Has the needs of the business changed? Not really. The needs of the businesses have been and still are continually increasing revenue, reducing cost, and acquiring market share. And to do this, businesses want to acquire customers faster and at reduced cost. They want to provide them with top quality experience and also want to retain and nurture their existing customers. So what's really changed? What's changed is not the need of the business, but the expectation of the business from the analytics function. No longer it's about analytics as a function to provide knowledge and deeper insights to the business. What business expects today is for us to provide end-to-end -end integrated solution. Let me give you an example from one of the first companies I worked in. What were their needs and how were they using analytics at that time? It was a call center and analytics was used to forecast the call volumes at various times so that the operations manager can do the appropriate staffing. The need of the business is obviously to have appropriate number of customer service staff so that the customer queries can be answered in time and a new customer can be acquired and existing customers who are angry about the services, they can be retained in time. And at the same time, the company didn't want to have too high staffing, which will obviously mean higher than the optimal staff cost. Fast forward to today, the same call center. Their expectation from the analytics is not just providing the call volume forecast. Instead, analyze the historical pattern of absence, look at the forward staff schedule, shift and rostering policies, vacation plans, manpower plan, and provide the optimized staffing recommendation to the business. In fact, it won't just end there. Analytics should also look at the historical data and predict the attrition and send timely alerts to the business on when they are likely to be understaffed and when there is a need to hire and how much. So business needs are still the same, but the requirements from analytics have changed. That's all. And this growing expectation of the business is not just the added responsibility, but it has been a significant opportunity for analytics to shift from the back end and take the driver's seat in the front end. And now with analytics coming to the driver's seat, one more thing has changed. The application or the use cases have become far more apparent than ever before. An organization introduces a new service or solution and the entire industry comes to know about it. And it's not just the industry, but the companies from the other industries also rush in to emulate the same use case. And that's great. 
But with this freely available knowledge of the use cases, should you just go ahead and replicate in your organization? No. More than the knowledge of the use case, what's important is the identification and the focus on what should be the priority for your business and for your customers. Now, let me talk about this from the point of view of the industry I'm currently in, retail. Retail revolves around customers, upsell, cross-sell, building loyalty, continually increasing wallet share, building customer knowledge through loyalty programs and running campaigns. Now, all of these are being used for a very long time and most retailers have been doing all of this. In addition to this, there are use cases also on using analytics for predicting the right products in the right quantities and sizes, and for these to be available at the right location, at the optimal prices. And there are endless use cases. And as I mentioned earlier, the expectation of the business is not for us to just deliver demand forecast or customer segmentation or price elasticities, but analytics teams are expected to be at the forefront of the customer lifecycle management. We are expected to integrate demand forecast with the vendor PO systems and to pres prescribe price point for each product. And in 2020, with the global pandemic impacting the retail world, the need for this integrated solutioning by analytics has become far more crucial than the pre-COVID era. In fact, due to COVID, there's been new requirements emerging for analytics, such as analyze the evolving customer traffic pattern and build solution to moderate traffic in the store, and ensure safety of the customer and the store staff. Now, what's amazing is how quickly organizations, even the ones with the limited analytics experience, have built analytical solutions for these purposes. Analytics capabilities that once might have taken these organizations months or years to build, that came to life in a matter of weeks. Now, let's dig deeper into integrating analytical solutions. Have a look at this wheel. There is no dearth of applications or analytical solutions which can be used in each of these individual functional areas and the integrated solutions that can be developed for each of these areas. However, the new age analytics is not just about delivering the integrated solution for each of these individual functions, but use the unique position that data analytics team have, which is having a view across all these functional areas and use this unique position to produce seamless solutions that run across these functional areas. For example, right products are made as per the intelligence on the taste of the customers and in the right quantities. And the customer's micro segment are sent bespoke communications about these based on the launch plan. And the appropriate staffing is put in the right locations, keeping in mind the customer preferred language and the level of assistance required by the customer. And then market is continuously scanned to dynamically adjust prices within the season. So that was about the expectations of the business from analytics. Now let me talk about another important area which has played a significant role in the evolution of analytics and that's people. Now people with data analytics skill set were scarce even two decades ago. And in the last seven years, number of data analytics professionals have more than doubled. Now hearing this data, it will mean that it should be far easier to hire these people. Clearly that's not the case because the demand for the analytics professional have grown faster during the same time period. Which means is that the demand supply balance imbalance, which used to exist two decades ago, has further widened. And it's not just the demand supply imbalance. The skills that are required have also changed over the years. New job titles have come up. The most popular title in analytics today is data scientist. This title did not even exist two decades ago. The skills that were required two decades ago were knowledge of statistics, people who could work on tools like Minitab, SPSS, etc, etc. Let's take a look at the skills that organizations today look for in their data analytics attitudes. Knowledge of R, Python, statistics, visualization, and the list goes on. And I'm sure a lot of us look for these skills when we go on to recruit new members in our teams. And these skills are extremely important. But for me, the most important skills I look for is the ability to frame problems mathematically and someone who has business focus and is curious about data. For someone with these skills, even if the other skills are missing, we can teach the other skills, no problem. We have a comprehensive training program and we can train people on those ones. But the skills highlighted in gray here, it's difficult to teach them. That you have to bring from home. Another thing that has changed during this evolution of analytics is the tenure of analytics professionals itself. It has shortened significantly over the last two decades. An average tenure for a data scientist in an organization is two and a half years. 
and it might become even more of a challenge in the future. What that means is that the organization will not only need to differentiate to appear as a more attractive employer, but also they'll need to be more creative to engage this population to have higher than the average industry tenure. What works for me to achieve this is to provide my team members an opportunity to explore different work streams during their career with us. Remember this wheel? We want our people to have a 360 experience of working across this wheel. And along with that, we have an extensive career progression plan for each team member. So for each member of my team, they have complete visibility on where they will be in few years time with us. And that's how I managed to have a longer tenure than the industry average. From people, let's move on to another area, technology. And let's take a look at some of the key processes which underpin the development of any analytical solution and how has that transformed over the last two decades. 20 years ago, if an analyst has to build a model or provide analysis to the business, they'll spend a lot of time in collecting the data, cleansing the data, putting it into a nice format. And for any model build exercise, depending upon the size of the data, they'll be taking a sample to build the model. And this whole process will take a long time. I'm sure a lot of us uh, who are on the conference today, they will remember this old saying that 90% of the effort in any model build exercise is actually data preparation itself. But that's not so much of a problem anymore. With the introduction of platforms like Haroop, the data is put in a data lake, in the unstructured format, coming in large volumes at high velocity, and with the use of machine learning algorithms, the entire data can be analyzed and the models can be built on it in the as-is format. And also, there is no need to spend extra effort to recalibrate the models at regular intervals. And that's a massive change and has definitely helped in the evolution of data analytics. Another thing that has evolved during this evolution are the platforms. And not just the platforms for performing analytics, but also the platforms and the technology that underpins the key processes of any business. Businesses have invested in a range of softwares, ERP platforms. Now, whether that's cloud-based or locally implemented, and they've built and transformed their core processes around these platforms. The seamless integration of analytical solutions to this platform is not an easy job by any means. And sometimes if you have to fully integrate, you may actually end up compromising on the quality of analytics itself. A lot of technology companies have tried to solve this issue by incorporating analytical modules into their platform itself. But we know that to fully adopt these large scale tech platforms, businesses have to transform a lot of processes. And sometimes these processes are unique proposition and it gives the business the competitive edge. So what can be done? The other option is that you customize these platforms, but I'm sure many of us must have experienced this and will know this very well. What's the cost involved, time involved, and the risk involved with such uh, customization. And also these uh, large platforms do not always do the best job across all the areas where your organization want to incubate analytics. So what to do then? When all of this is happening, it's important that analytics function is not just a bystander, okay? Instead, think about us as data analytics professional, what can we do to handle this situation now as well as for future? First, be involved and be part of the discussion where these platforms are being evaluated and you provide your honest views, not only from the analytics perspective, but from the best interest of the business. What, what works for me is that I do my own research and develop knowledge of uh, such technology platforms which helps in asking the right question from these technology vendors. Now this ensures that us as analytics, these technology vendors and the business stakeholders are all on the same page to make the right decision for the business. Another thing one can do is to look for platforms which provide you the ability to integrate bespoke analytical solution and your analytical tools, including open source, can sit nicely on top of this platform. So in summary, Analytics function has to play a key role in choosing such platforms by not just utilizing their knowledge about analytics or research about this platform, but also making use of the advisory skills and helping facilitate the collaboration across business, IT, and analytics team. So that was about uh, changing realities of technology and platform. 
Now let's talk about the core of any business, which is its customers. Very much like business and analytics, customers also have come a long way in the last two decades in their use of technology. They're leaving data footprints or willingly sharing their data, but most importantly, what has changed is their expectations from the companies. Hence, it's become essential for the businesses and the analytics team to understand the customer needs and develop solutions keeping customers at the heart of whatever they're developing. How do we do that? Before I tell you, let me play a two minute video for you. Hey, the X10s are online. Gentlemen, I am now about to send a signal from this laptop through our local ISP, racing down fiber optic cable at the speed of light to San Francisco, bouncing off a satellite in geosynchronous orbit to Lisbon, Portugal, where the data packets will be handed off to submerge transatlantic cables terminating in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and transferred across the continent via microwave relays back to our ISP and the extent receiver attached to this. Lamp. <laughs> down by sending a signal around the world via the internet. Oh. You know you can just get one of those universal remotes at Radio Shack? They're really cheap. <laughs> no, 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 you don't get it. Um, uh, uh, Howard, enable public access. Public access enabled. Boy, that's terrific. I'll see ya. No, no, hang on, hang on. <gasps> see? <laughs> Someone in Sichuan province, China, is using his computer to turn our lights on and off. Huh. Well, that's handy. Um, here's a question, why? Because, because we, we can. can. So, what did we learn from this video? Is that just because we can, and it's cool to do so, let's not develop solutions for the customer problems that do not even exist. I'll just one thing. Advise every analyst in your team to spend some time interacting with the live customer at the shop floor. This has helped us in not just prioritizing the solution to be delivered, but also in de de developing the framework of how these solutions are to be taken to the customers. Okay, so I've spoken about a number of areas and how they have evolved over the last two decades. But one thing that has not changed during this time is the business expectation of the return on every single dollar that is invested on these initiatives. While the commitment to invest in analytics has definitely grown, but also the expectations around return on that investment has also grown significantly over these years. What has worked for me is a clear alignment on not just the scope and the initiatives that need to be picked up for analytics, but also a clear alignment on the cost involved and the benefits to be delivered. And more importantly, how the financial impact of these benefits will be calculated, a clear alignment on that as well. Okay, I've shared my journey now with you of the last two decades. And if I look back, when I had to choose that course on business systems, I did not know that analytics could make such a huge impact on any business. But now that I've experienced this, I'm even more excited to continue to be part of this journey, the analytics journey. Thank you very much. Stay safe.